Hey everyone, Coops here from the whole box and dice. I've done the starter deck, I've done the review options, you've seen the deck text, the other number one equally tied most asked question that I seem to get is, what deck do I play, what's meta, what's the best deck, what are the tier decks, so I thought it was about time I do a video to give you my own thoughts on this, and I will say that I see a lot of different trends from a lot of different places in the world. I think there are some decks that are being played because of the fact that other decks are or aren't being played. I do disagree with people that say any deck is possible to win, you just are not good enough. Um, and the big reason why I disagree with that is I can see that there is a large player base for Dragon Ball, which is awesome, right? But there is a lot of people who are new to TCGs, they just love Dragon Ball. Why wouldn't you? It's an awesome series. So... I see a lot of people, you know, myself included, who have played a lot of trading card games previous to this. There are a lot of little things that it's probably a bit easy to pick up or strategy-wise, you kind of, you know, just um, things like counting cards out of the hand, for example, you know, looking at your opponent's hand, judging kind of how much they'll have. Most of the time, and our playgroup does this regularly, you know, we can calculate down to plus or minus about 10K exactly what your opponent has. And that way our alpha strikes rarely miss. You know, stuff like that you don't see new players doing. Um, obviously, having an understanding of the amount of cards that's been played, the likelihood that there is a two of, a three of, a four of in a deck as well. So you can start playing around stuff, especially in decks that play things like Weiss, you know, cards getting flipped off the top, or, you know, Critical Vegeta, where you're seeing cards go to the drop area, which is going to directly impact, um, impact how your opponent plays, and obviously cards that you didn't have, where your opponent didn't have the choice to actually see go into play or be charged as energy or whatever circumstances actually taken them out of complete control for your opponent. So look, like I said, I'm, uh, you know, I'll give you my thoughts on what the kind of top looks like and I'm not the best player in the world or anything crazy like that. You'd be an idiot to say that, but um, Hey, look, I, uh, I won these and you know, so they count for something, right? Like, <laughs> you know, so uh, like, I, I feel like I'm in a good place to talk about this. You know, I've been playing the game pretty much from launch um, you know, obviously had some success in some tournaments. We have a regular play group of about 12 that we, that I play test all these decks through. And, you know, some of my mates play some of the, you know, meta or better decks anyway. So I feel like I said, we're in a, a good position here to, you know, have a chat about this and let me know in the comments, you know, if you think I'm crazy, let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you all. But I thought it was time to have some actual constructed, you know, proper discussion about the tiers and um, I think that's probably a good way to start it because I actually really don't believe there is so much as tiers like this is the first set of Dragon Ball um, like people need to rem remember that you know there are definitely some decks like I said that are very strong there are some decks that definitely beat most of the time other decks but you know it's only a 50 card deck um, you know you do have eight cards that you don't have immediate access to in any game and you do have to charge some of those energy so there's obviously, like in all games, there's an RNG element to it. And I think this is kind of as close as you get to tiers, um, you know, to the tiers. And we'll start off with, you know, tier one, because that's obviously why everyone wants to know. And I really think there are only two decks in tier one. And there's a reason why there are only two decks in tier one. And we'll start off with the first deck, and that is Critical Vegeta. Now, funny enough, over here in Australia, Critical Vegeta doesn't get a lot of run at all. And that's because... The deck has some really good matchups. Um, it can be Control, which is obviously a very oppressive deck. Um, it has a good match against, you know, um, Broly as well. So it has a good match against Broly, who's obviously a very popular leader. Beats a lot of the lower stuff, um, obviously, which it should. But because it has such a good matchup against Control, or the, at least at worst, the matchup is definitely in Critical Vegeta's favor. Control doesn't get played, and I see this just based on all the tournament results that are posted everywhere in the world. So as soon as you don't have Control being played, Critical Vegeta is able to go to the top. Now, when Control's not being played, you then allow a deck like Champa to become Tier 1, and there's no knock on Champa. I love playing Champa. Champa's the deck I've been playing pretty much since day one. Actually, it was, it was the very first deck I built was the mono red list. Champa beats Critical Vegeta because it's faster. Champa can't beat Control because once they stop you and they stall the board out, you can't get through unless you've got the hit combo and then you've even got things like, obviously, um, Cold Bloodlust to stop that. But the smart Control players will protect their life at three, so you need a double evolution. 
by that point, they smacked you with Beerus, they've played Whis, or they've just straight up won the game by having 16 energy charged and turning Beerus sideways. So that's where I think the tier one discussion sits at. Control doesn't get played because Critical Vegeta beats Control. Champa beats Vegeta because it goes faster and it doesn't have to worry about the threat of Control ever coming up, which it has a worse matchup, a considerably worse matchup than Critical Vegeta does. So in terms of tier one decks or top tier decks, Champa and Vegeta, Critical Vegeta are your two tier ones, but only by circumstance. You start seeing Control either gets a little bit better or it becomes just gets played more. You will see Control beat those Champa decks and they are going to beat Vegeta, you, it's not like an auto loss. You can beat Vegeta with control. It's a difficult matchup. You need to understand both decks very well, but it's not completely unplayable. Tier, I'm going to dub this one and a half because I think there is a deck that sits just underneath these two and it's definitely not completely locked into tier two and that's Broly. Broly's in this really awkward amount because Broly is RNG personified. If you get that ring early and you can start getting that value Broly is a very tough deck. Um, messes with your hand, which is great against the decks that are trying to hold the big bombs early or draw into the big bombs early, so that disruption is really bad. Um, obviously opens up for if you're playing a blue-green list. You've got cards like Beerus, which can then further damage your hand. It has the regeneration cards um, in the bio army. It's got a really solid evolution chain when you include the promos as well. So you've got one, two, three... Um, five and six from memory from Broly, and then obviously four if you're not evolving it. So you actually have a complete, you know, one through six playthrough there. You've got some good tutors in the deck. Um, like I said, the regeneration is massively underrated. And when he's attacking, when you're sacking something, that you can then discard a card to bring back and get a second swing with, but your opponent's throwing away a card and pulling something down out of their battle area to their drop zone. Broly is a very strong deck. Uh, Broly obviously has... A bad matchup against aggro because the deck gets out too quickly and what makes that worse if you don't see that ring in your opening hand you're hurting yourself by playing Broly or attacking with Broly so it has a bad matchup against the aggro decks because the aggro decks just feast on that instability or that lack of guarantee that they're going to have the ring early and obviously they've done some articles I think it's about like a 40% chance of saying that you don't see it at all if you don't get in your opening six and you mull six again but you know that's a risk that you have to take, and that was what you know that's what makes Broly so strong. So I think it kind of makes sense as to why Broly sits in that kind of one and a half to tier two. So what sits in tier two? Well, tier two, I think you have both Goku, so both the starter Goku um, as well as the start exclusive Goku, plus the coming soon Goku. That if you grab the demo decks you got, I think these cards have a place simply because blue is such a strong color. So when you're in blue, not that really it matters too much with your leader, but the fact that you can, with the starter Goku, for example, you're able to untap, um, that's super valuable. Um, you know, anytime, you know, with either of the Gokus, you know, anytime you can untap a battle card or, sorry, anytime you can um, untap an energy or you can go through for a dual attack when you have a certain amount of energy, plus you're getting buffed by the energy you have on board. Both the Gokus have a really strong game. They definitely have some weakness in terms that, uh, you know, they don't, like to have too much pressure applied early. Uh, you know, some of them are on the Goku chain, some of them are on the Vegeta chain. So there's a little bit of inconsistency in terms of exactly what the, they play. They do struggle against a critical Vegeta matchup, uh, but the deck is pretty solid all in all. Like any deck, you know, and I did a video on this as well, especially like Tempo Goku, any deck that gets Tempo value like that is insane because you can two for one your opponent. So, you know, whatever value they get, you're almost doubling. So, that's never bad in any card game, and Dragon Ball Super is no exception. Other decks that kind of float around, and I'm going to say Frieza as a special mention, but I have a real big problem with Frieza. A lot of people are madly in love with the turn four Frieza win, which is, uh, I will be the first to acknowledge, is a 100% real thing. When you get the nuts, when it all works for you, win on turn four, any deck feels like a world being, right? But, if you have any element of control, any element of disruption, any, any element of stall, any element of hindrance against that freezer deck, you just you lose. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. It's certainly against a deck that plays Beerus because Beerus is just a horrible, horrible deck against it. Um, you know, anything with disruption is not good. 
you know, Vardos, the things that attack your battle cards. There's plenty of bad, you know, matchups that it has. And once again, similar to Broly, if you don't draw the nuts, if you're not getting that uh, freezer down on turn four, the deck feels bad. So I do like the deck. I like that it's a very cheap deck. It's a great intro deck to play. Uh, I do like when, like I said, when Control's not being played, you get a pretty fair run at Critical Vegeta and you have a good matchup against Champa as well. It's a pretty good coin flip kind of thing. And Champa does edge you out a little bit most of the time, but still a pretty competitive matchup. So you do get a lot of value there. But Frieza just really struggles against decks that disrupt either your hand or the state of the board. And that's just not the kind of, that's not a deck that I want to be taking to a constructive tournament. Now, cards like Beerus, Beerus is a massively underrated leader. And Beerus is definitely tier two. And like I said, the, the tiers are so loose anyway. It's one of those definitive, there is zero chance for movement. But Beerus is, is a tier two leader because when Beerus plays against, for example, the Champa deck or the Mono Yellow Freezer deck or Ginyu deck, none of those decks can win. You can't beat the Beerus leader because the Beerus store control is way too strong. However, as I said before, Critical Vegeta has a really favorable matchup. You know, it's definitely on the plus winning percentage. It's not a 50-50. It's a 60-40 or 65-35. And that makes it really hard to play Beerus when so much of the meta, because obviously there was a couple of early wins, you know, when Dragon Ball was first getting some exposure with Critical Vegeta, and people have just bandwagoned hard onto that deck. Nothing wrong with that. It's a new card game. You don't want to play a crap deck. Totally understand, but it makes it really tough for Beerus to get a foothold when there's so much Critical Vegeta, and that's a bad matchup for you. But if you play the Beerus decks, and if you watch my videos on them, you can see how well they go against the Swarm decks, how well they go against the low-to-the-ground aggro decks, and it's just a horrible matchup. So Beerus is a very similar card to, like, Broly, I feel, and to an extent, Golden Freezer. When the matchup is in its favor, it's so difficult to get a win, but they are a little bit glass cannon because when the tables get flipped, they do struggle to be impactful. When you've got such a strong deck in Critical Vegeta, applying pressure to Beerus, it's not a good situation. Other leaders that I probably want to touch on because there's always people asking me, you know, Gohan, whether it's just a show fan favorite or just a character that people want to play with, I don't think Gohan is a good leader. Um, the ability for six to nuke the board, if there was a five drop field card that was like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, attacking or like, Battle cards of your opponent plays under four energy come in tapped. Obviously, you can't tap everything down because then the big stuff would just would be too, go on would be too strong. But a field card like that that costs five, I'd be all for. I'm pretty okay with that because um, obviously then turn six you can just nuke the stuff that's coming in. But you still have to deal with the big stuff that's entering. So I don't really like Gohan in that way. Now, um, Kit I think is a good leader in principle, but when your flip ability is completely glass cannon and they're not playing blockers, you're losing that benefit. Yes, you get the extra 5k, but you can't get that second part of the ability. So I think Champa is just a better leader because card draw just wins out in these games. Uh, the green Goku, yes, uh, double strike is nice, but it's probably not enough. Um, I, still, I think there is a better deck for the Goku that has double strike all the time. Like I think it is an underrated ability because it does put a lot of pressure on, but... You then still need a lot of low-cost cards to pump, uh, you know, ways to make your leader do go through for more damage. So it kind of lives in a very lives in a very tricky vacuum. Uh, cards like Ginyu, for example, amazingly fun card to play, cheap deck to build. You can build it with no rares. You can build it just with the couple of Ginyus. When you get the nuts on Ginyu, the deck is pretty much unstoppable. When you're flipping stuff off your life, it's just having the best time. When you don't flip the right stuff, you know, you flip a Raccoon with the Racer Gun or you flip a counter card, it doesn't feel good. It's bad value. Ginyu is very fragile and he hurts himself, which opens up the door for aggro and Critical Vegeta to just smack it in the face. So Ginyu, love the card. I play Ginyu all the time because I find it a really enjoyable deck, but against Control, it has a horrible matchup and that's just not something that you want to be a part of. And obviously there are a couple other leaders that I... That I haven't touched on, or maybe that is all of them actually now. You know, we're up to like 12 or 13 with the starter leader. But, you know, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about the leaders. And I think it is a very interesting space. This is obviously going to change massively when the next set comes out. But, you know, just remember, just because you see a list online going one, try to have a look at some of the other decks that were played. You know, if you see a, a Champa list go one and then Vegeta go two, three, four, you can see 
Chump's got a good matchup against Vegeta, so it's not so much that the Chump deck is good, it's that it took out some of the other decks that were clearly heavily played that it has a great matchup against in Critical Vegeta. You know, if you see a Beerus list do really well, and but you don't see any other Vegeta decks, surprising, but that's probably because there wasn't many people playing Vegeta, so Beerus gets a really solid run, and the whole kind of ramp to Whis win the deck, or just the quad double turn attack, is going to win out. So, you know, to have a look at some of the other decks that are being played, you know, obviously there are always going to be ways that a Gohan or a Vardos or a Hit or a, you know, Freezer is going to win a tournament. It's not like they are so bad that they can't be played, but you'd be wrong to say that they are on the same power level. And people say that, just just ignore them. You know, it, it, it's, no, it's no knock on them as a person, but like I said, there's a massive player group for the game at the moment. Some experience, some are not experienced. You would be absolutely insane to claim that there is one deck that is superior to everything, and you can never lose a game of Dragon Ball because there is just RNG in any game. It's no different to Magic, no different to Hearthstone, Force of Will, Vanguard, Final War, you name it. There is an RNG element that sometimes your opponent just top decks that, you know, that same Carver or top decks that Beerus or top decks Vardos or whatever it is or the Broly card they needed to really start putting pressure on you. So that's what I think anyway. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you've uh, you know watched at least through this point rather than just like jumping on the keyboard and being like, Broly's tier one and because I won two matches against a guy who's never played before or my mate plays Pokemon and so he's good. Just just chill, man. This wasn't supposed to be bashing people down. It's just supposed to be my thoughts. Like I said, I get asked this question a lot and after doing the starter deck and the starter upgrade, I wanted to address what I thought were the best decks to play or, you know, in, in terms of the best decks to play, if you're new to the game, um, if you want a cheap deck, play Freezer or Ginyu, right? Cheap deck to play. If you want a relatively simple deck to play, play Mono Red that really doesn't play any of the big high cost stuff. It's just free to combo, play the same Carvers, beat face, combo for 90k and win. Uh, if you want a deck that's very versatile, but requires a lot of understanding of the game how to play, play Critical Vegeta. If you like Broly and you want to roll the dice on RNG for a very powerful deck, play Broly. You know, don't let people tell you that you can't play a deck just because it's bad. But they're some of the decks that I'd look at starting to play with. Um, you know, that's just just my two cents. But um, you know, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Would love to get some discussion going in the comments. Let me know what you think. I've been Coops. This is the whole box and dice. Peace.